Morgan with Bowtie Treasures. How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday. Hope you're doing really well tonight or today, wherever you might be. But uh, as you stop in, say hello. We always like to hear from all of our followers and fans and friends and co-creators. So as you uh, watch tonight, grab a friend, let them know we're on, and I'd uh, love for you to join us. And as you have questions, don't hesitate to put those in the comments. A really nice project going on here. In fact, if you'd like to, you can go back to my Facebook page, Bowtie Treasures. Last night, we did this painted, uh, we did most of the painting on this antique dresser last night. So the, all the shading uh, was done last night and I wanted to get that all done because tonight I want to I want to go a little bit further with it and that is we're going to apply a transfer to it and I also want to accent a little bit of the uh, uh, would you been molding that we have here so I just couldn't do it all in one live so hopefully you can get a chance to go and check that out I actually painted after I w cleaned it with white lightning and then I applied boss I actually painted it rebel yellow and so there's an undertone of yellow in this piece. And it actually worked out really well. I don't think I would have ever planned it, but I really love the yellow undertones that are in this piece. And I'll show you, let me zoom in just so you can see it. Uh, depending on your screen, you'll see just a little bit of layering. So all of the painting I did last night, I kept it thinner and I didn't want to lose all of that. So every once in a while you'll see a hint of rebel yellow and uh, I think it's kind of cool. So, and I mentioned last night that you could always swap that yellow out with a different color if you want, just a little bit of hint of color coming through. And then we, uh, I applied, uh, first I applied driftwood to it. And then after that, I used French linen for a little bit of vignette shading didn't do blending uh, but more shading which is just thinner paint applied and faded in and then I came back with gravel road my jars are a little bit used there gravel road to add some darkening especially to like the lower sections and you can see how it has a little bit of shading around the edges so that was with gravel road that worked out really nice later on probably after we're done with our transfer work I'm going to come back with sandbar, currently planning on sandbar, and I'm going to add some highlights to the wood you bend and then probably here and there throughout the piece just to add a little bit of highlight throughout. So that's kind of a recap. There is a mirror. Let me see if I can hold it up for you. There is a mirror for this one. And I'll, so far I'm at the boss stage. So this is what it would look like with boss. And uh, I have not, uh, this one's a little behind but I am gonna to get to that eventually. And the top has been sanded and it's just wood. And I plan on coming back and doing voodoo gel stain on that. My favorite thing to do with voodoo gel uh, is black magic voodoo gel stain. Just looks so nice on, on sanded wood. I don't know what it is about the black, but uh, that and, and some nice Gatorade top coat looks so good. So. Uh, that's what we're working on and but tonight let's get to um, some of the fun let's, let's take a look at the side I have my dresser on a turnstile and so you can see here the gravel road at work and a little bit of shading and uh, some people as I mentioned last night would probably use more of a wax approach on that and that I, I just don't do I don't do a wax and I also darkened up the back of the legs just to give it a little bit of a worn a worn look so the idea was out here in this area this is uh, French linen in the middle is more of the driftwood and I believe if you recall I actually used those colors on one of my recent pieces so it's kind of been a nice combination that I've enjoyed doing tonight I'm going to try and see how great lace transfer works on this piece I had really considered putting, um, some of the things I considered doing was to apply transfers to the front 
But I just kept coming back to I, how I think it's going to look really nice to have a transfer just on the sides. And uh, it's not a look you see very often, and in some cases it may not even be necessarily the sides that you see. But I think it's just a nice little complimentary surprise. It complements the wood you bend, it goes with the piece, uh, but it doesn't take over the piece. So that's really the goal uh, that I am going for. When you get the transfer from Dixie Bell, you'll see on the back, and when you shop online, you can use the link that I put there in the description. It shows you that it's a four piece. So if you put this together, you can make, you can get all four pieces working together. My goal here is to go from there down below. Now notice that it does not go all the way down, but I have an idea that I'm gonna maybe do some creative cutting here and kind of finish this in like a zigzag, almost like it's fading out. Now you can sand in distress, but I don't think that that's the look that I wanna do here. Uh, so we're not gonna go that route. And I'm just making sure, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna to wanna to do one and three together because of the way the transfer stacks. They're made to overlap. So when I take one off, the next one's gonna fall right in line. So you can kind of see on the screen there how, how that, that works. So they're gonna butt up together. Um, but the first one's gonna be the easy one because I'm not planning on doing anything fancy with that. So what I'm getting, getting at is that there's a little bit of white space. I don't want, I want my design to go all the way to the top. If that's the case, then you need to cut your transfer. And I have some, some scissors nearby. You can use a cutting board if you want. I'm just gonna use my handy dandy cutting skills. This is my elementary school work here. It doesn't have to be perfect perfect because it's under the lip or the lid. I just want to cut off that extra white. And the backing paper, you want to keep that on there until you're ready to apply this. Cut both of those things together. And if you're following the instructions on the can, it's probably a good idea for you to also tape it. So here's the other thing. Keep in mind that I have a little bit of a lip. So do I want to apply it? Do I want to cut it first? I kind of recommend that you cut it ahead of time. I think that would be the smart move to go. And so we're figuring this out together again. I, I, I did not pre-apply any of these sides because I wanted you to join me on my journey here and uh, get this thing cut together. Now, scissors are nice, but on those sides, I want it to be an, uh, nice and clean. So this is just a normal handy dandy cutter board that you can get probably. All right, so it looks like I need to cut off about a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna be close, but not short. Fingers crossed, right? That's what I'm looking for right there. The next cut is gonna be down below. Again, I could do that with my scissors if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and, uh, actually I don't need to worry about that because the transfer is just gonna end. So that's not gonna be a problem. So next for me is to remove the backing paper. Last week, I applied the Magnolia transfer. So I think what I just experienced, I need to slow down. Take this off. Because of the cut, I may have kind of inflicted some separation anxiety on my transfer. But you know what? If it messed it up, we will run with it. Yeah, I did a little bit. So I demonstrated you need to slow down. That's okay. So over here, I damaged it just a little bit, and I'm gonna run with it. I talked last night about how you need to, how it's sometimes nice not to totally, and I'm cutting off my damaged area, how it's nice to not always repair every flaw in your piece. So this actually goes with my philosophy of keeping some flaws on your piece. Here we go. Just gonna stick that right up there so you're seeing it. And I'm just giving it a, a, a light, a light. And I did put the colors in the description of this live. So you can go back and um, catch those if you missed it. But, uh, and I say that because sometimes when I'm demonstrating, I can't always 
recite all the colors. I used a few and I still have one more that I haven't used yet, which is going to be the, uh, what did we say that was gonna be? Sandbar? So. All right, so I'm just giving this a first rub. And in just a moment, I'm going to start peeling it back. But I like to give it a, a nice, first rub on it. Hopefully I didn't bring it in too close, but. One of the, ex the exciting part about transfers is that when they start releasing, you know it's working really well. I'm a little tight on the left side. You can see it kind of binding here. And I think I'll be, I think that'll be okay. Well, um, if I, need to, I can pull my X-Acto knife out, give that a little trim, get the grab, just that section right there. And I'm looking for that first indication of the release. When it gets, when it gets foggy, ghosted, if you will, that's what you're looking for. Part of my problem with my turnstile is that when I start doing pressure like this on things. There we go. And it's so smooth once you get it going. There's the transfer starting to work right there. And I think I'm a little in the shadow on that, so I apologize, but hang in there. it was done already. Gotta go through the steps. Okay. So you can come back and do any kind of list, just check. Um, give it just a little bit of a courtesy rub, make sure everything's down really well. If you were gonna distress it, this is where I'd probably do something like a sanding sponge on it, but I'm going to leave it just like that. It's really subtle. I can see it really nice in person. And by the time I top coat this thing, I think everything's going to neutral out. But there's a, there's a closer view of it. So you can see some of the original yellow coming through from my first coat all the way over to French linen. And I almost want it to be, I, the vision I had was that it was going to be a little bit of a surprise, kind of like you're looking at it like, oh, look at that. So you're almost adding a little bit of a bonus to it. So if that is one, I believe the transfer that goes below it will be three. So this would be the next one. But what I have to do is I have to cut this and I have to match it up. So that's gonna be our number one goal. But I'm excited to see that come through. So what we wanna do is, I'm probably gonna come in here and cut out all of the, the items on this bottom that go up. So it kinda of has this tapered, decorative tapered. So as it comes to the bottom, it's just gonna end. I think that's gonna look really cool. And let's just put some finishing touches on this piece. Um, and the finishing touch that I've been advertising or telling you all about, is the idea of just putting some highlights on the uh, decorative element. And I've been working with what I would consider an analogous color palette where everything's pretty close on the color wheel. And in doing that, you would even be able to see, for example, I'm trying to see if I can hold these up. All the colors are very closely related. So when I grab sandbar, it's not because it's the brightest color, but I felt like it had the same 
characteristics that the piece already had. I, could, I don't want to put white and cotton here. It'd be just too much bright. I want it to be subtle. I want this to still feel a little bit like it's uh, aged. Dixie Bell just said it looks awesome. I agree. I wish I could really capture how nice, um, but sometimes you don't want to, you don't want the, you don't need the transfer to steal the show. You just want it to kind of add a little bit of depth and surprise, and that's totally where we are. So I have already put some French linen um, and gravel road shading around here and into the deep crevices. So all I really want to do now is just put a little bit of a highlight. Some things that you could even try. Give, give me one second, let me. So I want this to kind of just have a little bit, almost like it's worn off. So I'm dragging the brush at an angle. You can see I don't have a lot of paint on there. And I'm just hitting the highlights, high points of this. If I were to show you all the sides, there's even a little bit of the rebel yellow still on the side showing. I think that's just, it was such a great happy accident that that happened. And um, we have those pieces that do that, right? You know, they just surprises in little ways. It's always great. So just hitting the tops, highlight point, put as much or as little as you want. And that just adds a little bit of highlight to it. So that demonstrates that technique a little bit. And what you can do with this sandbar or highlight color is I can still come back and maybe uh, another thing you can do, you know, see how I did the French linen on the outside edges and I went lighter? I, I can keep the eye a little bit focused on the center of the piece. I'm just dragging right on the middle. All right, and the camera may not be capturing that. It's just, um, these lighter tones sometimes can be a little difficult, but that's all I'm doing. So I just take a little bit of paint and I'm just going to just hit the three grooves here so I can keep the highlight and focus on the middle. The hardware, there is no hardware for this. The knobs for this is their wood. And I do plan at this point to continue the wood because to me it just keeps it a little bit more rustic where this piece is at. When I stage this piece, I'll do my best to try and capture a little bit more of that, that look. But it's subtle. Everything about this is subtle. I'm trying not to get too dramatic. Um, you know, extreme dark to light, just very, very uh, soft. Because I'm going to show you one more place that I like to sometimes put highlights, and that is on the feet. The light is already naturally hitting. You can see it's already hitting this. I'm just going to give a little bit of an extra push, just a little bit. What I don't want here is brush marks, so you can even Take your finger and kind of spread it out, rub it a little bit, tone it back. But I just kind of like adding a little bit of extra there. A little bit more. I don't want to take it all off. Apply it however you want. I could put it on with my finger if I wanted to. You could even dab it. But that'll just keep, that'll keep a highlight on there, even if the lighting doesn't quite so you just, you do you. You could even come back maybe even with a, a, like a blue or a teal and add some color depth if you want. It's gonna look like someone has just kind of hit it and released some of the early colors. That's kind of the, what I'm going for. Sometimes I'll do this with italics. It's just a faux finish, right? So I'm just, I'm just kind of playing right now. I think that'll be cool. Get all my pieces. So let's do this. 
So I'm going to trim. I'm trying to see if I can get it where you guys can see. How about right there? So what I don't want is I don't want anything that's going up because I want to taper. So I think I'm going to trim. See the dots here? Let me get it as close as I can. See the dots? I think I'm going to cut it, cut out this part because I want to. I want the transfer to taper. This is what I was looking to do. So now everything kind of finishes on. All right. I almost cut this exactly right. I'm going to take a hair off just on both sides. I'm going to keep going. So right now I'm looking to line this up. That's the way these transfers are made. I'm doing my best to get them to touch. If you feel like you need to, get some tape. And I'm not really too concerned if it's not perfect, especially at this point since we already discovered it's not super, super, um, it's not super noticeable. But this is a great way to solve the fact that the transfer is not tall enough to go all the way down. But it's going to just feel like lace was just uh, put on there. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. And usually, again, I just give it a quick kind of a courtesy burnish or rub just to get it to all on there. This will make sure that it's going to stay on there a little bit more likely in case I mess something up. I don't have any tape on this piece right now. The transfer has enough stickiness to it that uh, I haven't had the need to do tape, but if you're doing little pieces and things like that, it might be something that you consider doing. And this is the part that I didn't quite get short enough, but that's okay. I do appreciate Dixie Bell coming up with high quality products. They just really make uh, making my projects look great easier and more exciting because I can get creative with it. So I'm gonna go work sideways now just because I think that's gonna be a little, a nice way to go at this point. But I've changed that a lot already. stop there. Happy to have been able to come on tonight with you and demonstrate working on some projects, especially the, uh, Dixie Bell's wonderful bells and whistles line with the transfer and showcase the Dick Chalk paint products. So good stuff and I'm excited to even get to the top and put some voodoo gel stain up there. And so again, don't hesitate to follow me, Facebook, Instagram, Check out YouTube, love for you to subscribe over there. That'd mean a lot. Do something creative this weekend or in the days ahead. Let me know if you need anything. Don't hesitate to message me on Facebook. And uh, y'all have a great night. Happy Saturday night. Take care, everybody. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.